Hey everybody, John Deere here and welcome. We're going to do a special segment on Embroidery Medic and we're calling this one Design Disaster. There was no saving this patient whatsoever. One of our subscribers actually posted a design and she showed the back of the design, which you can see here, and there was jumps and trims and tails after every single jump. And I asked uh, the subscriber to send me the file so I could take a look at it and it would just take far longer to try to repair that design uh, as opposed to digitizing it properly and correctly from scratch. So I had to pretty much start over on this and you're gonna be amazed at how I was able to get all of the jumps and trims to completely disappear. It started. Now as I mentioned there was no saving the patient on this one. Uh, this design we're just gonna start over from scratch and I did ask the subscriber to send me uh, the original artwork as well as the stitch file. We can we can learn a lot about a design by looking at the stitch file of how it was done. And, and I, I do have to give a, a little bit of credit to this one because when I turn the true view off and when I look at this design and it was a DST file which is a Tajima format that they actually supplied. Uh, there, there's a few things I, I actually don't mind about this design. Uh, the lettering isn't half bad, uh, not exactly in favor of the underlay choices they used. And um, as far as the, the fill pattern, uh, I can tell they didn't understand push and pull compensation and the uh, cross stitch underlay doesn't exactly make sense to me. I, I also can see that there's no underlay in some of these objects and the incorrect underlay in others. Um, but what really, really kind of stands out to me is this situation here where they have all of these tie-ins, tie-outs, and trims between every single one of these little circles. Now, they, they did obviously know enough that the original artwork has many more tiny little circles, so they did reduce the amount of circles and they actually increased the size, which that I, I have to give credit for. The only problem is all of these jumps and trims. I, I did go ahead and count all of these little circles and there is, just in that outside line alone, 32 separate jumps and trims. Not to count uh, the ones that are in the paw here, which could be avoided as well. So he here's the deal. 32 unnecessary jumps and trims. If I look at the stitch count of this entire design, it is 5,804 stitches. But just in this outside area alone, I have 32 trims. That means that I have to calculate 120 stitches of downtime for every one of these trims that's in place. The machine has to slow down, tie out, stop, jump over, trims, it goes in, it starts up at slow speed and then continues on. If you calculate the lost time, there is actually almost 4,835 stitches of lost production time within this design just because of the way that one area was digitized. Now, keep in mind, you'll see this design come up on screen and say 5,800 stitches. It's going to take X amount of time to run on the machine, but that isn't the truth. We need to add on that 4,835 stitches, which means that this design, which you perceive as 5,800 stitches, is actually closer to 10,800 stitches when it's done. I'll give you a little trick with making money with embroidery. The trick is your machine makes money when it's running. <laughs> it's, it's common sense and you need to learn how to create designs and digitize so that your machine will stay running as much as possible and avoid unnecessary jumps. Okay, let's get going with digitizing our design. I'm going to very quickly grab that entire design that we brought in as an example, and let's delete it so that we have a nice clean screen. I'm then gonna go into a six to one scale, so I'm zoomed up six times larger, actually, on my screen, and that way I am digitizing at a set scale. If you've seen any of my education for digitizing, and we do have interactive lessons that you work side by side with me, we support 10 brands and in level one lesson one I teach my golden rule which is digitizing at a set scale. Now I'm going to digitize at this scale. I'm going to choose a color that is friendly for us to see and I'm going to take a little bit of extra special care with digitizing the first little circle that I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that it is as perfect as possible and when I say perfect that means that it is going to be a little bit distorted on screen. 
uh, if you've digitized before, you know that you do not want to have a perfect circle on screen. It's going to actually look like a, a little bit of a sideways egg because there's going to be push and pull compensation. And that's a very, very tiny little object, but that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now let's just turn the true view off. And when I look at this right now, and I'm just going to select that object, there's absolutely no underlay on there. So I am going to turn on an edge run underlay. It'll just give me a little bit of extra stitching to hold that in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab that object. So let's select that one single object and I'm going to go to my layout tool. And within my layout tool, I'm going to go to my circle layout. And I know that there were 32 little circles in that. Every second one was done by the, the last digitizer. And I'm going to make sure that I put this in place so that I have it lined up as closely as possible. And then I'm just going to hit the enter button. And now I've automatically digitized all of those little circles. But I have basically accomplished the same result as the previous digitizer. I have a jump and a trim between every single one of those objects. You can see all the jumps and trims that are in there. So this is where I'm going to actually you know, change this a little bit. But before I do, I'm actually going to choose, let's say, a different color. And let's choose a blue color right now. And I'm going to digitize, first off, this circle here. So I'm going to come in to my digitizing tools. And I'm going to choose digitize blocks. I'm going to start right here and I'm going to overstitch on the inside ever so slightly. Make sure that I put my first point down right about here. And then I'm going to continue again adding some extra compensation to the top part of the design. And I'm going to digitize this circle all the way around. And when I do hit enter, I'm going to make sure that I end up having the right underlay. I'm going to take that underlay and I'm going to actually select that object. And let's make sure that that is also a center run. So now I have a center run underlay and that's going to ensure that it's going to sew out nice and evenly. And I haven't come and touched that object there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take that uh, circle tool and I'm going to make sure that I go to outline and I'm going to choose a satin outline and I'm going to start right in the center of this object. And I can kind of use my crosshairs to make sure that I know I'm center center on the, on the object. And then I'm going to hit that, make it larger, and I'm going to bring it out till I pretty much cover that area exactly. And then I'm just going to hit the enter key twice very quickly. And I'm going to do uh, select and make sure that my offset is off. And then I'm going to grab that object and I'm going to make it, let's say, uh, 0.5. We'll try that first. And that might need a little bit more. So we'll add 0.55. And now I can see that's a little bit wider. And if I turn my true view on, I can see that I have a outline stitch that is almost touching those little circles perfectly. So that's, that's exactly what I'm looking for for the base layout. Now, this hasn't solved the problem yet of my having all these jumps and trims. But what it has done is it's given me an area right here underneath of the blue stitching that I can now travel between all of these objects and get rid of those trim. So now here's where we're going to think outside the box a little bit. And we're going to kind of trick the software because I'm going to choose my digitize open shape. I make sure that I have my single run on and I still have my green color. And I'm going to make sure that I start right here to the closest point of that first circle that I created. And then I'm going to put a couple stitches down and move into that circle. So I can see now I've generated a straight line. And it is at the bottom of my sewing order. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to move it up right below the first circle that I created. And then I can go back to my digitize open shapes and I'm going to do the next one. I'll go to the next circle, put a couple stitches over into the next object, create it, and I'll move that again up in the sewing order so it's underneath of that second circle that I just did. Let's just uh, backspace undo because I don't want to move the artwork. You can always lock your artwork in place, which I'm going to do right now. Uh, it's always a little irritating when your artwork moves on you. So now I know that's not going to happen anymore. Now I'm going to go back to my digitize open shape and I'm going to, I know I have the first one and the second one done. Now I'm going to digitize into the third one. So I'm going to pick up right here, go into that third object, hit the enter again, grab 
that shape right there, move it right underneath of the next circle, and then just continue on and do all of the pieces as I continually go all the way around from one object to the next. Now I have one more to do, so I'm just going to continue on. I'm gonna grab my digitize open shape. Let's just go from this point up to here. I've continued this process all the way around with all of these dots. Now I'll go back to my resequence, grab that last piece and place it right in between the last two objects. And now when I look at this, I actually have absolutely no jumps or trims anywhere in this design and they are actually all traveling underneath of that object. So if I turn my player on, we're going to see that this is going to uh, sew very, very smoothly as it goes between all of these objects and I really have absolutely no issues with how this is actually being laid out. So this is exactly what I'm looking for when I want to create an area to travel so that I avoid all the unnecessary jumps and trims in the design. Now I'm going to digitize the paw on the inside and I'm going to use actually a digitized close shape. I'm going to make sure that I have my fill stitch on. It's going to be a satin stitch with a, an auto split because that's the way I saw it before. And I am going to uh, turn on my underlay afterwards. So let's just digitize this fill. I'm going to come right here and let's just go with a curve, straight, straight, curve. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit out of the edges to adjust for my push and pull compensation. You never really follow artwork exactly because we have to sort of second guess the way the the uh, you know tension on the machine is going to react with the shape that we're digitizing. So I'm just going to hit the enter button and there I've created that fill. Now let's change that to the same color. So now I have the same color and let's go to our reshape and I'm going to move the stitch angle so it's similar to what was done on the, uh, the sample that was uh, done before. And that looks pretty similar to the shape right there. Now I am going to uh, actually travel closest point. Actually, let's just grab this one and make this one a little bit longer, exaggerate that stitch a little bit right there, and move this one on the inside here. Try to make sure that we maintain that shape as much as possible. This is where I'm going to join. So if I grab my green stitch again, let's just uh, escape from this, so I'll select it. I'm gonna grab my green, and I'm gonna digitize the next object, but I'm gonna turn on my digitize open shape, make sure that I am on a run stitch, and right here, I'm gonna put a point a point right in between and a point going into that object. So now I have a traveling point in. Now keep in mind the fill is gonna be going horizontally and that travel stitch is horizontal, so it's going to sink right into the fill. There's really no reason to have a uh, actual uh, you know, jump stitch there because I know it's going to be okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to digitize this and I'm just going to overcompensate a little bit out of the edges and do that point right to there, hit the enter. Again, closest point between here. Let's go back to our digitize open shape. I'm gonna start right here and literally walk into the next object. Then I'll go back to my digitize blocks and I'm gonna keep a little bit of an angle on this one so that it doesn't directly go into the same angle as the fill that I know is gonna be going down. I chose the wrong shape there, so actually let's select that, turn that into a satin, and that's fine. I'm going to go back to my digitize open shapes, and I'm going to go right across here, put a point, point, point into that object, have a traveling stitch, go back to my digitize blocks, go back to my fill stitch, make sure that this is a nice uh, curve, and again it's going to exaggerate that shape a little bit, hit the enter button, go back to my open shape, and I'm going to come straight across here and go straight through the same direction as the fill, go back to my digitized blocks, make sure that I have my satin stitch on, and then I'm going to come in here and just put these points down and hit enter. And now I have that entire paw done with absolutely no jumps and trims. So besides the 32 jumps that were here, there was actually four or five more jumps in here. I've just saved even more stitches. Now I'm going to turn my true view off for a second and I'm just going to check all of my underlay stitches. And here I can see that this one and let's just grab all these pieces right here. I do want to make sure that I have an edge run underlay on those. So I'm just going to come here 
and make sure that I turn on edge run on all of those pieces and that way I know it's going to be uh, a nice clean stitch on there. This one as well, I'm going to come in here and make sure that I have an edge run stitch on that one instead of center run. That's going to give me a cleaner edge. And now I know that all my underlay is in place so far. Now the only thing that I have left to digitize is actually this fill that's going behind everything. And I know that's going to be the same blue color. The, the good thing is, is actually I have this uh, satin stitch almost like artwork so that when I digitize this fill now, I'm going to actually digitize a closed shape. I'm going to make sure that I have it on a tatami fill. And I'm going to start right here and I'm going to put my first point down and then I'm going to right click for a curve and you can see how much I'm exaggerating the edges. I want to exaggerate the edges on the direction of the fill. Here I'm coming close to what I like to call the open end and then I'm going to exaggerate out of the other side and this accommodates for the push and pull compensation. Again this is theory that applies to any design and you, uh, if you want to learn how to digitize I got you covered there with all of our interactive lessons but I'm going to hit the enter button and I can see that my fill is now in place. Now if I go to select that fill, let's just turn the Trivia off for a second, if I select that fill, it's highlighted right now, I'm going to go to my reshape, I'm going to grab the angle, hold the control key down and make sure it's at zero degrees. So now I have a uh, horizontal fill in place. So now I'm going to go back to my Trivia. Now if I look at this as far as my color sequences are concerned, I want to make sure that that fill that I did at the very end, I'm going to move it up to the beginning of the design because I want it to go down first. Then I have this uh, you know, green color right here, the last green that I did, I'm going to move that up in the sewing order so that it's right after those pieces. So now I, I only have three colors down, but when we look at this sew, and let's just turn on our player and we're going to see how this design actually finishes from beginning to end. We actually have our uh, underlay, our fill stitch, it's going down horizontally. Then we have our detail that is going to go around for those little circles, but look how they travel. They all travel underneath of the satin stitch that is going to be coming down later. And there it is, it covers up perfectly and we literally have no jumps or trims unnecessary necessary jumps or trims in this design. It's going to stitch out perfectly now and we're going to show you the difference. So once again this is proof that a picture is worth a thousand words. If you look at this design beforehand there was all kinds of unnecessary jumps and trims and if you look at the after we actually were able to do this design with absolutely no jumps and trims. The subscriber actually messaged me and told me that this design ran in less than 15 minutes and had no thread breaks and just ran perfectly on the machine. It really doesn't matter how good a design looks if it doesn't run well. So if you want to send us your sickly designs, make sure you send them via Facebook message to John Deere's Embroidery Legacy. The link to the page is in the description below and don't forget to like the page. Also, if you want to give a, a try at digitizing and, and learn how to create designs that actually run well, you can go to our Digitizing Made Easy site. We actually support 10 different brands of software with interactive video lessons as well as a 30-day free trial if you don't have any software and would like to start playing. Hi everyone, John Deere here and thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends. Also, to become part of the legacy, be sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new weekly video. So join the legacy now. It's no mystery, award-winning embroidery is our history. Thank you.